Okay, so next up we have the Cass Arts 100% wood pulp. Lower end, but still made for watercolor paper. And we're back with our friend Prit. <laughs> Imagine they see this and they want to sponsor me. No hate, Prit. This is a great product for children, but not for professional artists. So let's start with the yellow this time. Okay. Whew. That's already a lot better. So immediately what you will notice is that the paint goes on more smoothly. The paper doesn't instantly buckle up like the others. I mean, it will start buckling soon, but it's not like elephant skin like the other paper. Another thing you'll notice, or hopefully notice, is that the paint will re-wet on the paper and blend more easily. Let's try adding some water. Yeah, see, immediately you don't get that horrible ridge of the point of no return that the other paper gave. You can actually work with your paint a bit more. Sorry, I'm contaminating this yellow with all this red. See, and you can take paint off. This brush still damages the surface of the paper by virtue of simply being, it's like a scrubbing brush. It's great for getting this chalky hard paint out of the pan. I would not be able to do this with a softer brush very easily or comfortably and it would probably in all likelihood damage the bristles of the brush because there would be a lot of friction and that eventually wears down the fibers and the bristles especially with natural bristle brushes once they're damaged you cannot fix that it's like you know when your hair gets damaged and you have to go to have your ends trimmed because conditioner nothing is helping anymore it's permanent damage I know there are ways that people use with synthetic bristles to maybe restore them because they are usually acrylic or plastic of some kind. It might be possible to use heat to reshape them, but personally I just think that's too much hassle. I would rather just get a new brush. So yeah, the blendability of this paint is not great. It's, it's very chalky and I am damaging the paper with these bristles as I'm trying to scrub it up. I'm even making some foam. So yeah, no, not great. <laughs> now, mid quality brush. It's always strange to me when the power is out how quiet the house gets inside because we have a very very noisy fridge i'm not sure if that's everybody's fridge or just this one but it sounds like a wookie in heat or something it's so loud and makes all these noises we have a little booklet that shows you all the noises it makes and what's normal and whatnot and all of them are normal it's just that wow it's loud <laughs> In fact, it's so quiet without the fridge noise that I went and put our kitchen clock inside a cupboard so the ticking wouldn't bother me because the ticking of that thing is super loud as well. As you can tell, I'm a little bit noise sensitive, which is it's just the way I am. So you can already see it's a lot easier blending with this brush. Sort of a green toned blue. It is. It looks like it's trying to pretend to be a thalo. I'm not even sure if they give you the ingredients. Nope. Bright and lively colors with good covering properties, i.e. chalky. Good covering results obtained on paper and other, other surfaces? What else would you paint on? With water colors, that's weird. Comfortable and joyful painting. Panting! Comfortable and joyful panting. Free brush included. Well, I am certainly ready for some comfortable and joyful panting. I got so excited about the typo that I forgot to blend this paint. Oops. It's blendy blendy. So yeah, marginally better result, but not great. You can actually see here already, the surface of the paper was also damaged by that cheap brush. The areas where I scrubbed a lot, I think I took off the sizing from the surface and it made those yucky white spots. Now with a high end brush, or at least a good brush. I must feel like this paint dries out my, my bristles. It's like using crappy shampoo in your hair. Yuck. I'll use some brush soap on this afterwards. I broke a piece off and put it in this container, but I wash all my brushes with that soap. It's got oils and stuff in to keep the bristles nice and healthy. And of course, remove staining. Painting on this uh, paper is already miles better than the printer paper, I must say. The wash area of this red really looks very orange to me. So there isn't a proper red in this palette. I would say this is more like a deep orange than an actual red, but it is the richest red that they have. So, you know, now for the blue. Not much blending happening. It's better than the other brushes, but ugh, this paint is so bad. <laughs> okay, so now let's move on to the Cockman. 
Okay, so now we've got the cadmium yellow hue. Unpleasant as always to paint with this brush, but the color goes on much nicer. Cadmium red hue. Wow, oh. <laughs> that's already so much more brilliant than the Prit red. Even the sound it makes as it paints on the paper is like this crunchy, scratching sound. The rats in the walls! Only the rats in the painting. Someone make that a horror game. I will accept royalty payments. Thank you. Right, so blending so far not going great with this brush as expected. I'm just trying to soften these edges and not let them overpower each other too much so you can still see the vibrancy of the colors. More water. So you can see this paper start to buckle already, which is normal, it's not taped. It is 300 grams, but you know, it's still gonna buckle. It's still, the fibers are still swelling from the moisture, so that's why it buckles. I think this is about as good as I can get it hang. Cadmium yellow. Oh, that feels so much better. There are little specks on this paper. It looks like maybe it was handled or something got on it before I painted because there are little areas that repel the water. Oopsie. Not your turn yet, buddy. <laughs> Which can happen if you're not careful with your paper. Handling watercolor paper is always a bad idea because we sweat all the time, even if we don't feel it. I mean, that's how partly we can grip things because we have the little bit of moisture and enzymes in our fingers to allow us to grip things properly. So we're constantly sweating through our hands and we're constantly producing acids and salts and things, even if we don't feel that we are. And that can really destroy the surface of a paper. Sometimes if you paint, you'll see, um, you know, where you've, if I can move the paper for a second, where you've pressed your fingers on to hold it still. When you take your hand away and you try to paint over that area, you'll see fingerprints repelling water and that is literally just your body's sweat. So try not to handle your papers too much. You can use a piece of tissue or a different piece of paper to press on, you know, as a barrier between your fingers and the paper to prevent that kind of thing. But yeah, for this, I mean, this isn't like something I'm doing for a client, so I'm not too, too fussed if that happens, but just bear in mind, it is something that can happen, so try and avoid it if you can. Wet and wet blending with this brush is already a lot easier. And then the phthalo blue. There are going to be huge dents in these pans by the end of this exercise. But it's okay. Dented pans are well-loved pans. And I do have a habit of maybe being a little bit too precious with my art materials. So this is a good exercise for me to <laughs> let go a little bit. Sailo is such a strong color. It easily overpowers whatever you mix it with. So keep that in mind too. Another cool trick, which I always tell people about if they attend my classes and I send them notes is have a rag or a piece of paper nearby when you're done and you want to go and fetch more water into your brush, just dab it off. And that way you don't, that would have gone into your water. So your water jar stays cleaner for longer. Obviously having two jars is good, but you know, that looks fairly blended. I'm just gonna leave it to do its thing. Then the nice brush. Can you guys see the paper starting to, to buckle? It's lifting up in the middle because the fibers are expanding this way. So it's pushing the paper up, making a dome. You can combat this by spritzing the back of the paper, which I think I'm gonna probably do right now, just to prevent the paint from running to the edges of the paper and obviously taping or pre-wetting and stretching your paper. But honestly, I almost never um, stretch or tape my paper, just partly laziness and partly, actually mostly a space issue. This is pretty much the space that I have to work with and I can't really work elsewhere while I wait for papers to dry. Cadmium. So buttery smooth. A little bit of water. Even though it piles out, I still hear something humming and making a noise near my desk. I wonder if it's my camera. That would be kind of weird. But I guess there's nothing else electronic that currently works. It must be the camera. Weird. Insert X-Files theme. 
little width and width blending. Now the phthalo blue. Yes. Oh, I love the way phthalo blue applies with this brush. It's just so rich and beautiful. But it does tend to dirty your paint water very quickly. <laughs> I'm making a nice muddy stripe on the end here, but that's okay. Watercolor will do what it wants to do. That's what I always say to people. You can ask it nicely, but at the end of the day, it'll do what it wants. And that's kind of one of the reasons, the many reasons why I love watercolor so much. It just, it accepts your input. It values your opinion, but the executive decision lies with <laughs> the paint itself. Onto the Daniel Smith Rappy brush. Man, I'm gonna have to do this so many more times. I didn't think this through. <laughs> okay, mine yellow. Painting with this brush on this paper sounds like my cat using the litter box. One of my cat's pixel. When she uses the litter box, she just sweeps and sweeps and sweeps the litter for ages before settling down and doing her business. And when she's done, she takes about a full minute or two to make absolutely sure that she has swept every single corner. She, she swipes the sides of the litter box, she swipes the sand, she swipes the little flap because it's a covered litter box with a, with a um, swing door. She sweeps the door. And she's very loud about it. At night we wake up and we hear doof 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 or the sweeping sound. And we'll panic for an instant before you realize it's just Pixel doing her usual orchestral performance in the litter box. She's quite a talented percussionist. They don't tell her I said that. She might get a big ego, bigger than she already has. So blendability already looks a bit better with the Daniel Smith. Now for the Thalo. And this, by the way, is the um, Thalo Blue Red Shade. PB15. Beautiful, beautiful blue. You also get thalo blues in green shades and yellow shades, I think. But this red shade is just stunning. In my honest opinion. Let's try blending. This brush, man. I kind of feel like those beauty YouTubers that use those, or they try out those crappy hacks, beauty hacks that you find on Instagram and they use like silicone boobs to apply their makeup or, what was the one? Using a banana skin to apply foundation or some nonsense like that. This makes me tired think about all the energy and money wasted on those nonsense hacks. Okay, so Daniel Smith looks all right. Now the mid-range brush. Mayan yellow goes on first. I'm gonna have to squeeze out some more, I think. So much better. Let's add some more yellow to this. So much better. Oh. Man. Okay, now pearl red. Man, blending with this brush is just so much better. I'm sure you can all hear the, the audible relief in my voice every time I switch over from the crappy brush to the decent ones. I guess that looks blended. Now, phthalo blue.
good enough I think. I'll just add a little bit more blue to the corner just to deepen it up a little. And then we'll move on to the nice brush. My and yellow first of course. I boiled myself some water on the stove because we have a gas stove so power outs don't affect our cooking too badly. We can still use the hob. Boiled myself some water, got myself a tea light and my nice um, teapot. Put the teapot with the tea light on, put some loose leaf tea in. Brewed myself some rose tea which is from Wittods which is fantastically delicious. And I've probably had about six cups. <laughs> Small cups but still. So my bladder is complaining at me right now. Pearl red. Beautiful rich red. Oh. Then the phthalo blue. Maybe left myself a little bit too little space here. Let me just lift some of this red. That's something you can't do with printer paper at all. You can't lift paint. I should actually show you guys what happens when you try. I'll even use the good paint so you know I'm not just showing you the crappy print paint. Excuse me, the um, <laughs> the child grade <laughs> print paint. It's not necessarily a crappy product, it's just for what I, I need paint for. It's not good. struggling a little to blend with a small brush. This is not the ideal size for doing washes. I guess this works. I'll uh, add a little bit more blue and then call this pretty much done. And then, the schminker. See the paint is, thanks to the uh, buckling of the paper, having an adventure down into the pyro red there, but that's fine. I mean, it'll still demonstrate what I need it to demonstrate. Ugh, crappy brush. Okay. very neat with these mark, uh, markings. The lines I drew to demarcate the blocks. I give it a decent go but you know. Now the mid-range brush. Chromium yellow hue. Just gonna put some water on the edge to soften it and go in with the perline red. I 
red wants to take over. <laughs> it's flowing into the yellow. But I want to try and keep areas of pure color so people can see the vibrancy differences. Then our friend Thalo Blue. I guess this is as close to blended as I'm going to get it. Now for my nice brush. Okay, let's add some water to the edge. And then grab our Perlin Deep Red. Now, Thalo Blue. I think you guys pretty much get the idea by now that paint performs better when it's on better paper and when it's a better quality paint. You would not be able to lift paint like this on that cheap paper. Okay, so my paints are muddying up a little. Sorry, that's my own fault. The paper is buckling and making a dip here. So all the paint is kind of flowing into the blue. But um, I think you can still get the idea. So once again, Prit dull as heck. From the Prit to the Cotman, there's a huge jump. And then the Cotman, Daniel Smith and Schmenke colors are very comparable on this paper in terms of vibrancy. I'm gonna set this aside to dry and then we can move on to our bucking food.